and welcome to the Beat Brings Us Together podcast series two. This week on the podcast, I've got London-based DJ Terry Ann, and I be for regular. We first met um, actually in I be for when I played for an event session. She had a wicked string of releases, including most recently one on Stash Records, DJ SKT's label. She holds down several residences in London as well as her own events, and it's been brilliant getting to catch up and having a chat all about her musical journey. And this is the first podcast recording in the nation's capital as well. So, first London podcast. Enjoy. Go on, just crack on. <laughs> so, welcome into the podcast. We've got my good friend Terry Ann. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. This is the uh, first podcast we've had recorded chilling on a sofa with handheld mics. Yeah, with um, uh, coffee and water. Coffee and water and uh, a broken door handle because I've just pulled the door <laughs> handle off the kitchen door. I'm so sorry. Come around my house and uh, wrecked it. <laughs> oh, you know what? I did have actually recorded Ali Sullivan's podcast on a sofa, but with mic stands and stuff. So this is way more chill. Yeah, very chill. <laughs> it's so very, chill. very chill. It's so nice. Thanks for letting us come around and uh, record in space. Oh, you opened a little drink there as well. It's a, a non-alcoholic <laughs> beer, actually. Oh, that's such a good, that's such a good idea. I know. It's actually the only way I can get through dry January. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, attempting it. Yeah, I've I've drunk three, four days, if I'll be honest. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, it's a heavy emphasis on my attempt. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll call it w- wet. No, what is it? A damp January now. I'm so. glad you said damp. I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> I was like, oh, good Lord. <laughs> Taking the wrong turn already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like we we shouldn't know each other now. <laughs> oh, but it's brilliant to have you on. Thank you. Um, I think we'll roll into it then. Yeah, okay, let's with crack the first on. question. If you, uh, I don't know if you can go back this far for me and sort of trace back in your musical journey of yeah of where you where you started, where your first sort of glimpse <sighs> of music or your musical interest. Yeah, so my my dad has always been huge music person, should I say. Um, we always had music on, kitchen, car, um, everywhere, basically. And I think that that's had quite a big impact on my influence. We never had music on in the background. My dad never had it. It was on, like it was full blast. It was like if the okay, music yeah, was on, yeah. it wasn't just in the background. <laughs> Some people would have it on in the background while they're doing something. My dad would have it full blast, it, like yeah. no doubt. Um, and he liked everything. Like uh, it was obviously I was born ninety three, so I would have been like nine, like late nineties, early noughties. Okay. And he liked like indie rock, like Oasis, Radiohead, Stereophonics. He also loved like Podigy, like Faithless. Yeah. Uh, rap, Eminem was always on, or some Jay Z or something. He would just have such a wide variety of music. Um, my stepmom loved disco and like old oh, old school stuff. That's like my 80s. parents. Yeah. <laughs> Is that my your parents, parents love Motown and disco. Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, my dad was a bit more hardcore. He was very up to up to date with things. He always had the latest album. He was he was nice. very like he loved it. Um, so that's probably my first like from three onwards. What I can remember was music everywhere, basically. Yeah. Um, and I think it wasn't necessarily electronic. It was more a bit of everything. But I think that kind of led into electronic music. Yeah. I think I, I was, when I was thinking about this podcast and kind of what one of my first, not memories of music, but one of my f- first when I heard something, I was like, that is like sick. Like, that's really good. And there's a, there's a song on, I think it's on Kid A, Radiohead. Um, cool. called I think it's called Idiotic. Um, yeah. It's an absolute tune. And I think radio was so ahead of their time when it comes to like music. Yep. They were like making synths and all sorts of stuff in like the nine, uh, really early 90s, 95, 97. And for me, I was like, oh my God, what is that? That's like crazy. Um, and I, uh, yeah, so that was probably my first, like, I was probably about seven or eight when that track came out, well, that, when that album came out. My dad would play it on repeat for weeks and weeks and weeks. So yeah. I, I still have it on repeat. It was my top you know, Spotify, yep. 2019. Yeah, yeah. It was one of my top ones. It's come out in 1995. And it's one of my top 2019 tracks I've played this year. Oh, amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how much I love that. Um, but, yeah, that was probably it, really. I think I was I was always going to festivals when I was, like, younger than I should yeah. have been going to festivals at, probably, like, 15, 16. That's okay. That's I was taking my brother when he was, like, 13. Oh, anyway. wait. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, yeah, I don't know if I even told my parents I was going to the festivals at the time, <laughs> but, yeah, no, it was fine. Um, but, yeah, I think that there, I think I, like, when's the first time I saw The Prodigy when I was 16, I want to say, live? Yeah. And it was probably one of the craziest gigs I've ever been to. It was at V Festival, they headlined it. When you're 16 as well, that's 
pretty big show yeah, to see. Yeah, it, it was like it was insane. Honestly, obviously, I knew all their tracks and their old stuff and their new stuff. I think it was when um, that Warriors Dance track was massive. That, that oh, was yeah, absolute yeah, yeah, tune. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, they they I, they actually scared me a bit. <laughs> have you seen Have you seen a picture? <laughs> it's an intense show. They are literally. I mean, he is a scary man, and I was near the front. Uh, I think I waited out all day to get near the really? front. Really? I was like hardcore fan. Yeah, that's hardcore. Oh, that's hardcore. <laughs> um, I regretted it immediately when they come on because it was like people jumping around, mosh pits. I was yeah. 16, didn't know what was going on, drunk, like just trying to have a good time. But no, it was, it was one of the, it was amazing. I'm really glad I got to see them. Um, Faithless I saw that year as well. Like I was always drawn towards the electronic side of the music, basically. I always liked the dance music. Yeah. I was always kind of in and amongst the new tracks and ahead of the trend and stuff on, on music with, with like... Okay. Yeah, with electronic stuff. Yeah. So really, yeah, enjoyed always enjoyed that side. Yeah. Um, and then obviously house music got massive when I got to that exact age where it was meant to be massive. Do you know what I mean? It's 2013, 14. And okay, so like real... Uh, maybe, yeah, yeah, kind of Hot Creations sort of hot sound. Hot Creations really, kicked really off, Really big yeah. MK sort of organ house yeah. back in. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like, like baseline house. I think I was trying to recall um, my first like r- rave. <laughs> we call it a, a rave. Ooh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. So I was 18, obviously, just, just allowed into clubs and stuff. And I've been to V Festival a couple of times, but... I mean, if you've been to V Festival, you know it's it's not a rave. It's like a teen club. Like, yeah. it's not hard. Bigger commercial bands there. Bigger commercial bands. I think I saw like Kasabian there and some. Like, did you see Oasis? I did not see. I, I went the year after Oasis headlined. Uh, okay, so did, maybe so it was sixty. Did you go to Chelmsford one. Yeah, Chelmsford. I went to the Chelmsford one. I think. The, Were we at the same one? What year did you go? Oh, so I went three years in a row from when I was sixteen. So it would have been. 2000 and maybe 12 or 13. Oh, sorry, it's probably like the year after I went or yeah, something. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, okay. I did definitely missed Oasis because I, I would have I, loved well, to see them. I also missed them because they didn't perform. I think oh, that, yeah, they didn't perform. I think they played at the Stafford or yeah, one yeah, and they, they did didn't play at Chelmsford. I was like, what? I did, <laughs> however, I was um, privy to, I think it was the last year I went to V Festival and Beyonce was performing and I'm actually, like, I'm not a huge Beyonce fan. She's obviously amazing at what she does but, yeah. My friends had dragged me there and um, it was the year that she'd got her hair caught in the fan. So she was dancing on the stage. She flicked her hair and the hair got caught in her fan. Oh and God. it was worth it just for that. Honestly, it was absolutely... <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be horrible. It was hilarious. It was really funny. I had to stop the music and like, get her hair out the fan and it was it was entertaining. <laughs> That's what Amazing. I said. Um, but no, my first rave I went to, God... Um, my friends were all into this kind of like underground music scene. Well, one of my okay. best friend was, and she's a year older than me, my best friend. So she was into the, she was a bit ahead of, the, ahead of, ahead of me. Yeah. Um, I think I was like, yeah, 18. And she was like, oh, I've, um, have you heard this, this, um, of this girl? And I was like, well, who are you talking about? And she's obviously like Birmingham, like underground, like Hannah Wants. Have you heard of her? I was like, no, don't know who, don't know who that is. She sent me a track of hers and I've actually like, it's probably one of my most influences. Really underground. No one's even heard it. Like you think of her and you think of all her big yeah, tracks. Yeah. She had a track called I Still Love You and it is an absolute Oh yeah, I used banger. to play that all Did the time. You? Yeah. You're, you're from Birmingham, so yeah. you'd be all over that. Um, but no, she was like not big at all and she was performing in South End. I'm obviously yeah. I'm from, from South End and we used to have a really good scene down in South End and unfortunately it's all kind of closed down now because everywhere's closed down now in, in the underground scene outside of London. Well, particularly big cup venues anyway. Yeah, for yeah. sure. We used to have maybe six or seven big dance venues in South End. Yeah none left um but yeah so she cu- she was coming down south end to perform perform dj yeah. and my friend dragged me to the rave and um it was a rave as well god it was like something i've never been to in my life before it was like an un- in a box and the, the place was called the box <laughs> how, how big was the sort of scale we talking 120 people oh right it Bloody was hell, so yeah. small no one knew she was really underground at this time it yeah. must have been like two, don't know 2000 <laughs> was 18 so whatever that was um but yeah they literally uh, maybe 150 people max yeah. so she did like set out but it was a really small venue and i remember being there and being like what the hell is this like this is so <laughs> good was this your first experience of being in a, being in a, something like this yeah so like yeah. other than the prodigy and <laughs> obviously slightly different um yeah. <laughs> other end of the spectrum <laughs> <laughs> it's completely different um but no it was yeah it was i, I i'd been to um 
Love Box before that. Cool. Um, which was cool. And we watched like I see so, you know, Disclosure, which I was really into at the time. Yeah, yeah. And Annie Mac was obviously big commercial as she still is, and that was great. Um, but nothing like in a confined space with like really loud music that I really liked. Okay. Um so that was definitely like a a switch for me to get into this music kind of music and look into it more. And I got I've got a bit obsessed, I think. <laughs> um, not just with like that music but just exploring that whole genre of like house bass line yeah. obviously it did coincide with hot creations all the like you know jamie jones's track and all the mk tracks got really big in the actual chart so yeah but i think i was always more yeah drawn that and that was me in basically yeah i was really interested in it and well that was kind of the, the time it was going commercial it wasn't was, it so yeah it was. you get that exposure and then you can yeah you go down the rabbit hole don't you and you're just in. looking at whoa what's <laughs> all this been... underground music i'm listening to yeah it's amazing. yeah it's crazy yeah i think i had um yeah and that was it I, I went to lots and lots of different events and I went to university in uh, Hertfordshire, so I trained to London was great, easy, straight in. Um, oh, straight off to Egg, actually. It was um, yeah. straight into King's Cross, and we walked to Egg on a Friday and then get the first train home. So, yeah, it was just in. like, I, And I mean, end up seeing lots of different types of house music, like not just what I liked, but potentially like just minimal stuff and yeah. deep house and... Um, yeah, I was just, I was fully in and my friends were fully in. So it made it a very fun <laughs> and interesting time. Um, yeah, probably suffering for it now. <laughs> too, too, too many, too many raves, but no, it's, yeah, it's very, it was a really good time for music. I think that, yeah. that, that couple of years. I think, uh, electronic music scene sort of exploded after, I guess, what was kind of drum bass, dubstep, yeah, real dark, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, real moody sort of tunes mm. and it just completely went the other way. I guess, I guess maybe what came first? Yes, yeah, so like UKG, yeah, and yeah. then into like super happy, and then back to super moody, and then like kind of yeah. super happy again. <laughs> well, I remember just wanting to like explore different things. I think we saw um, so a load of my friends were like really because it was obviously very commercial. The house stuff was more. We're going to go to that event, but I was always quite keen to go into like fabric. Were always really good at hosting very mm. different types of music, like different genres of dance and different genres of. Um, like drum and bass, I have a jump, drum and bass room almost yeah. every week, and I used to find myself in there occasionally. And My friends always used to go to yeah. uh, the drum and bass down there. It's just great. Like they used to showcase such different, and even now they still do actually. Yeah. They used to showcase lots of different types of music, not just commercial music. Mm. So that was really interesting. I think I'd take like probably take elements of the way I DJ and the way that I make music from different DJs and different things I've heard. So yeah. definitely good to. It was definitely a good time to explore different types of music. Ooh. Coming on from that then, where where did that element of, of electronic music, where did you, when did that progression happen when you went to DJing then? It was really weird actually. I, did, I didn't have like a eureka moment where I was like, I just want to do this. Like I, I just, I really like music. I, I loved all these raves. I loved, I was like a bit obsessed with like finding different songs and songs that no one else had heard and underground and all this stuff. So I think it was a natural progression. I was like, right, okay, let's try and do this now. Um, and as anyone knows, yes, people say to me sometimes, oh, it's, you know, isn't it DJing like really easy? Like, oh, well, no, it's not actually, you can't just, just jump on a deck and just play. If you've never done it before, it's, it's yeah. actually quite challenging. So I bought a little, um, like a small, what do they call them? Controllers. Okay. What was it? Was it a new mark on any chance? Tractor. I want to say controller. a tractor yeah, yeah. controller. It must have been Newmark. Like I probably still have it somewhere, but that came up on a podcast. I, Did I've it? Done, I've recorded recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love them. <laughs> yeah, they're they're great to like if you're going to do a little commercial gig and you want to uh, when you used to like carry them around. Yeah, carry so them good. <laughs> I think I did my first couple of gigs on it. So I, I I literally dragged this controller to a bar to play. Yeah, and. um yeah, I, I, ref I think I just like was too nervous to play without the controller for a while. It, you know what? This is something that's come up quite often. Um, yeah. Just through like people asking questions. It's always like that transition from um, controller to CDJs. Even though you're doing the same thing, it is quite daunting. Um, yes. No, it definitely was so for me. I, I think I'd practiced for... Maybe like a year, like solidly a year in the bed in my bedroom, just literally yep. at university. Um, had lots of time off still on my hands. Um, I was between lectures and going out, and I just sit and I just practice and I, I practice and practice and practice. And it was only when I thought I was, you know, I, you know, I can listen to it. And I used to like, 
they watch all these YouTube videos and stuff, and they always say cover the BPM up and and try and yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I started doing that. That was fun. Um, but yeah, no, I think it was it was good. And then I I think I moved to London when I just graduated. So I went traveling, come back, and then I got my first gig in a little bar. Oh no, my first gig. Sorry, I got through a friend actually in, in Coco in Camden. Okay. Yep. So like the upstairs loft, one of my, um, someone I knew ran an event there and he said, do you want to, you know, do you want to come down and DJ for an hour? Oh God, challenging it was. <laughs> um, yeah, like house music, yeah. bass, like, perfect genre for me, yeah. what, I've been, what I've been enjoying. But yeah, and he, um, I got there and I'll never forget it. God, crazy. Um, and it was like, not, it wasn't that busy, but it was enough for me to be nervous. Okay. And um he had first gig anyway you know he's gonna be nervous oh easily but it was even worse when i've been practicing on a controller and i got there and he had like tractor vinyl so like they were vinyl Time coded vinyl yeah right and that's what you were meant to play on yeah oh my gosh <laughs> so, extreme. so that was horrendous no it, it was no it was hard it was very hard. i don't know why i'm saying it wasn't it was probably terrible and I cut the music once, at least. Yeah, I imagine that's it's great. A, it's a difficult thing to do, time coded vinyl. It was really hard. Um, yeah, like from the computer, you drag and drop, and it was time coded yeah. vinyl. So yeah, it was very hard. So essentially the same software, but like completely different apparatus that you're using. Yeah, basically it was. It wasn't that fun, um, but I did it, and it was it, uh, good on you. I, yeah. I did it. That's all I'll say on it. And then yeah, we just went from there, and I did, I did enjoy it. I had, I always had. Um, song selection on my side if that makes sense even if I wasn't yeah. perfect to mix him um I always had songs that I had like I just drop a banger and be like I'm really sorry <laughs> no, well for me curation is like yeah the largest part yeah I you think you can yeah. always learn more skills yeah. but like the curation is hard learned you know true true yeah and then I, I think it just escalated from there I got a, a good job in London um and end up investing I do think it's hard if you don't have the money to invest in the equipment I do think it's hard to like mm-hmm follow through but i remember buying my first little pair of they were free uh free 50s um yes 350 pioneer they're basically the worst the worst um cdj you can get basically without it being maybe back in the 90s it's like there's no there's nothing it's just a cdj you can put cds in it's the first i'll tell you what it's the first pioneer um, I'm gonna have to look this up. Look it I'm gonna up. Have to look look at a picture and give the, a, it, give the listeners a bit of a description. <laughs> it's the first. It's the first one that would take a memory stick. That's what I remember. Okay. It's the very first um, CDJ that would take a memory stick. Um, it was three fifty. They were really quite terrible in terms of like they weren't. You couldn't get it in time very easily. Ah, uh, yes. So <laughs> it did run on record box. Yes. It ran Just. on record, but that first one, it was yes. the very first, I think. And you could record to a USB stick via the mixer or something. You could, it was the first, I think, I believe it was the first um, deck that you could, it could read, yeah, a memory stick, not just wow, a CD. Yeah, yeah I've, I've used these ones, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not that easy to put them in time for some reason. Yeah, that's the point. So I, yeah. I spent uh, about probably another year on those in my bedroom again. Okay. I had like a, again, a really rubbish mixer, probably like a Newmark 2 channel, the cheapest mixer you could get. Oh, and um and I just practiced and, and do you know what I put a lot of like my skill now down to the fact that I used such um like bad that you had to really get them in time. Yeah. If they weren't in time, it wasn't like these modern day yeah. pioneer like crazy press a button, it just goes into it wasn't like that at all. So yeah, no looping, absolutely not. Well, the looping was not quantized. So if you loop something, you better be right. <laughs> yeah. I never understood why they put looping on like No, um... did I <laughs> On, on those decks and like, I've used you know even like old CDJ just like this doesn't yeah. loop what's the point in having the loop function <laughs> it honestly loops. and I never looped actually and it's only recently actually probably in the last year that I started to loop if I was going I mean maybe if I wanted to loop a vocal I've got a bit more yeah um kind of inventive I suppose but no it was it was yeah so then I had I think kind of went from there I won um I had some stuff I, I won a competition which was a big thing for me you know obviously DJing I was DJing in a bar in Soho like not too many people I get I, to be fair it's more of a commercial gig luckily the yeah. music was quite commercial at the time the house music stuff and I started running my own little event there which is called She's in the House ah cool which was really fun um I was trying to dig up this is 2016 it's a long time ago um but yeah I dug up the posters the for that it was fun She's in the House it was just women it was just female DJ so I just Wicked, booked female yeah. so it was really cool and it, it just house music but as the house music scene become less commercial it become they wanted to get R&B and stuff and that 
they just could just continue in the just continue in the trend. trend. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so yeah. obviously, when I was just trying to find you know gigs that would suit my music and the whole scene started to go a bit more tech house uh, yeah. as I started getting more and more into into it, and I won a competition actually with um, quite a big brand now called Cutting Edge. Um, yeah. yeah. So they, I had actually played for them in Amsterdam last year, um, which was really fun, uh, in a coffee shop. Um, but no, I won a competition with them a couple of years ago to play Lightbox, and I remember it being a oh, big yeah. thing. Um, yeah, so that was my first proper, proper in front of lots and lots of people gig. Yeah. I'd had lots of experience, like just like on CDJs by this point, but obviously still very nervous. And and yeah, and it kind of it kind of went from there. Really, I think you do need. Um, a lot of persistence um, to get those gigs in when you first start out. And I think it was mm. a challenging time to get yourself heard in such a crowded market in London. Very, very crowded. Um, and yeah, and I sent a mix to a guy who ran a brand called Alter Ego. Um, if you know Alter yes. Ego, yep. yeah. So yeah, and he he liked the mix and it was, it was a bit weird. It's really weird how it all played out, but... Um, yeah, and I ended up playing for him, um, which is a, an interesting story, which I'll I'll come on to in one of my embarrassing moments a bit later, I think. Um, <laughs> okay. But no, it, it was really good. He he really like really liked my music, and he believed in. Yeah. I think what I needed at the time was someone to say, "You're actually all right. Like you're good." <laughs> you need you just you need, need something, something and, and think, just a drip of you like, did, advice and, or and it was um, confirmation, hundred <laughs> percent. So yeah, that that was good, and then that they kind of escalated from there. I, I become resident for them for a while, um, for quite a lot, probably about two years, nearly a year and a half, and that was really fun when the tech house scene was at its tech houses, yep. tech houseiness, and uh, when it was at its peak, we yeah we had like Pax headline for us, um, we had lots of different like quite big DJs now mm. that weren't as big but were getting big yeah I've seen it like when you look back on some of your yeah. different nights we've had some, like, we've had some really good headlines. yeah some really heavy and, and it was really cool to get to know them and and different headliners and have to play different times it was yeah. really cool because I, I used to warm up a lot and obviously being a resident we warm up a lot and I that was obviously a very different skill to oh, just yeah. getting on the deck. I love it. Fight. I love it. It's, it's one of the best sets to play. Definitely, definitely made me realise that I was. That I really enjoyed that part and building a vibe and getting people on the yeah. dance floor. It's very nuanced, isn't it? It's real. Like it, it, you've got to play the right track, <laughs> otherwise you've you've you just completely them. ruined the vibe. <laughs> it's like you just like walking on a tightrope. Yeah, like that's what I, I compare it to. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, that was cool. But yeah, definitely doing warm up sets and. Um, yeah, and it was. It, I think I played the first gig with them at Cafe One Thousand and One, which is um, which actually Alicia headline. Well, Alicia was oh, sub, that sub headliner, okay. sub headliner. Right. She was a while ago. Um, but yeah, no, I think it was just what I needed at the time. And obviously, people evolve and things evolve. They've actually gone to a, a, a very minimal sound now. So yeah. we decided it was probably uh, my sound isn't as minimal. Absolutely fine. Wishing the best of luck. And yeah. we kind of stopped um, working together probably beginning of this year, last year. Sorry, beginning of last year. But all for the right reasons, like just people grow, we yeah, yeah, outgrow. Yeah. And it was really cool. And they, I still keep in contact with the guy and they're doing some really cool stuff, actually. Um, but yeah, no, it's, that was that was like the the bit. That was the hard hard bit. Was it the hard bit? Or oh, I don't know. That was the more challenging bit. Trying to get yourself heard in a crowded market, Yeah, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Oh, well, you're doing a good job of it anyway. I don't know. I think it's, um, I think where this, I'm so driven as a human. Like it's yeah. a bit odd. Um, and obviously I, I've got my daytime job and I just everything I don't think anything's good enough I'm always like next 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 what's yeah, that, next that's, but, that's a great skill to have <laughs> yeah really you good say skill that drive yourself insane I think but um, no it's <laughs> yeah, no you need a chill day at some point <laughs> I don't think I have one day of those off. I actually don't have one of those but no so that was my first yeah getting into DJing yeah. loved it production come yeah I'd like to yeah so oh. what, what brought you to production was it a natural progression I think I was I think I could did I, I'd love to say that I just, I wanted to make my own tracks because I wasn't finding them. That probably wasn't that. Now it is a little bit of that. I, I pushed okay. on during production because I was going on Beatport track search and I think I know what I'm looking for, but it's not not one of these tracks. That I'm going to yeah. try and make it. Um, but no, it was kind of a natural pro progression. I had um, had a really good friend of mine who I'm still good friends with now. Um, he runs a little collective called um, Darkest Before Dawn. Cool. And they're just uh, like the friendliest people. I, I, I got... Why did I meet him at some random event again? Yeah. Um, but he runs a little collective of produ producers from all over Europe. Um, got some German belt, all over the place, basically. 
And um, it's more just a networking thing where you can just share your track to them and they give you feedback on it and you you get into it. And That's he, great. Yeah. Really good idea. They, he's, he's also got a label. I think I've got my very first tracks actually on his label. Um, very different um, to what I make now. But yeah, so I think he taught me some things. Um, got logic, started practicing. Yep. And it kind is of... That what you, is that what you began with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Began with Logic. I have used Ableton a few times when I've done collabs, but not not to the extent of Logic. Okay. Um, but yeah, it kind of was a natural progression. I think, weirdly, I I mean, I not weirdly, probably very similar to you, I think, but I just hated production for the first year. I hated it. I couldn't make anything I wanted to make. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> You've got to go through it, man. It's going through that 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 stage was really challenging because I just I just didn't. I, I don't like things I'm not good at. That, that, that's yeah, true. especially maybe when you get so you know you get in so far into your twenties and you're like, well, I've kind of learned a lot of stuff now. You've yeah. gone through school, gone through, went to university, yeah, yeah, gone through uni, done your thing. You're like, I, I can do stuff, yeah, and then you've got to relearn something or learn a new skill. And it's definitely not in my thought. I'm not. A, I'm not very patient. I think I was telling you before. I'm okay. not very patient. <laughs> um, I kind of rush things. I'm. I'm I will want the end result now so that's yeah. not production production is not that at all <laughs> it's sitting like a little gremlin in your room yeah like, that's it clicking buttons you're like oh yeah. that sounds like a kick drum yeah so it, it took me a long time i think to produce a track that i liked at all like a, about a year year and a half but i think now i'd probably say i enjoy it more than dj which is really weird right, i okay. never thought i'd say that ever if you asked me a year ago that's interesting yeah i know i just really like the idea side of it i think it's it's a really create I'm not I wouldn't describe myself as particularly creative but it's a way of me being creative and I think where I've always um been able to put tracks together and think about loops and oh I'll put that vocal in here kind of just gives you more freedom to do that when you're in the studio um so yeah I really enjoy it now I go kind of I've got a full-time job I go twice a week I think I was just telling you um twice a week and I I love it I go there it relaxes me I've been bringing my non-alcoholic beers (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> I usually used to have alcoholic beers. And I used to really, it. I don't think I can produce with the alcohol. just one or two, nothing. just one or two, yeah, and the major. rest. <laughs> so it, it you picked up something quite interesting there. So you said that you you always like, oh, this is what I want to do, and then yeah, you can't get to it. But now you say you really enjoy it. Do you think it's like you've gone in wanting something, you can't get it? But then something else has happened. You're like, oh, wait, there's like yeah. a whole different other way of doing things and so many different end results. Has that yeah. kind of inspired yeah. you going forward with it? Definitely. I think you probably hit the nail on the head. I think I probably got so far with DJing. I was getting good, uh, when I started producing, I was getting good gigs. I had the residency. I was getting, you know, I was playing regularly, I'd say, in different yeah. places. I was running small events of my own. Um, nothing, not, not like my brand now, but smaller events at kind of more commercial venues. And, um, I was enjoying it, but I think I I realized very quickly that production was a way to get another way to try and, you know, get what I wanted to be, I suppose. But yeah. no, I, I, I did. I, yeah, I can't stress how much I really disliked it. <laughs> but I did now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm actually good at it. Great I, face you've pulled then. <laughs> oh my God, I did really. I, I, I went, I actually did the other day, I went to the I studio. Felt <laughs> you felt that? Yeah. Oh, um, I went to the studio the other day and um, I looked back on some tracks I made mm. um, really early on and, they're really funny like just so bad like the sound quality of them i don't know how i ever thought that it was a track it's almost that bad but <laughs> hey it's experimental it know, is yeah 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 no for sure i think i think the first track i ever i made um a track called well i, I think i called it radiohead i don't really have a, a name for it but i that was interesting because obviously i love radiohead i listen to them all this the time the radiohead track yeah you know you've this got is the one you're talking yeah, about yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you like you like this track don't you actually yes um, I had I can't remember who it is who downloaded it the other day. Um, oh, someone on SoundCloud, a big big DJ downloaded it. And was like Jack? How? No, I won't Jack. It was I have to look at it in a second. But he, um, someone from Solid Grooves actually. I think it was Remy, Remy or oh, someone. I have to think of his name in a minute. But he he downloaded it again. He was like, I think I've already got this track. <laughs> oh really? I was like, oh, I've said it to you twice. I'm really sorry. Um, but no, yeah. So it goes. It's like um. How I made that's really interesting, actually, because I I took the lyrics from one Radiohead song, "Creep," which yeah. is like a really depressing song, yeah. and then I took the a couple of the drum elements from the Idiotic track I was telling you about. Right. I didn't know, and I mixed it up. And I it's the first track I made that I was actually happy with playing it. I still could do some work on the sound side because I just 
I'm one of these people that once I've done a track, I'm done with it. I don't yeah. I don't like to play around with it again. Yeah. Um, so I probably should do that um, more. But yeah, that was the first track I really enjoyed making. And I remember being in the studio and, and finishing it and being like, this doesn't sound rubbish. <laughs> this actually sounds like something that someone would play, like out, out, <laughs> out to some people that actually, um, that would listen to it. Yeah. Um, and I said, I played it out in Gigalum for one of Alter Ego events. And people are like, what the hell is this? It's like, this is like really unusual. Um, and then I sent it to the head of the brand at the time, David, and then he opened with it actually in Ministry of Sound. Um, oh, that'd be great on that it sound was, system. Oh, it was great. Yeah. And um, and I was there and I was filming it and I felt like such a nerd. Like I was there like, this is my track. Um, <laughs> is it Banner next time? I know. Really Banner, about can it. you imagine? But no, it was in the, ma- not the main room, the one over, like the, the yeah, second yeah, yeah. main room, like the really good room. And um, yeah, and I heard it there and I thought, this actually sounds all right. But I haven't, I just thought I couldn't get it signed because I've used so many samples, but I hear some of the samples these days. I think I probably can. <laughs> yeah, you can. There's there's ways, especially the bigger labels, of, of yeah. getting licensing and for yeah. it. Yeah, I think I always wanted to. I haven't actually sent it to any labels. I, mean, I think actually it's a lie. I had sent it to one label and they did want it. And I, I just said no. Yeah, I thought so, yeah. I just said no. It sounds bad. I think I just really like to keep it on exclu- until, I don't know. I just, I bottled yeah, it a fine. little bit. So... No, but I, yeah, the one person I have said is they did, they did want to sign it and they're like a, a cool little mid-sized label which were, which I've actually got a track with now. Um, but no, that like, I don't know. It's one of those things. It's my first track I ever made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just, yeah, I wasn't sure, but... Feel very attached to that one. Yeah, yeah. I don't Crack know why. It. I love it. You, you played it and I beat it. It's so warpy. Moment. Yeah. It's, it's wicked. It's got it's like, a warpy bass line. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. But no, I think I, I try and like, my productions veer on the side of bass line. You've obviously mastered and stuff a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you said to me, other, I kind of know your sound now. I'm like, no, do this. You're like, no, I think I know your sound. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I'd like a drop heavy like bass and like mm. a groovy bass line. So yeah, I think that was the, the first track that I thought, wow, I actually could probably like try this again. <laughs> yeah, please. Oh, please make uh, some more stuff like that. Yeah. It's lovely. Well, it's kind of com- it's coming across in your productions. Yeah, um, I think. For um, sure. Yeah, no, I think definitely. I think that there's definitely now starting to be a bit of a pattern with some of the stuff I'm making. It's, yeah. um Which is good, I think, but. Yeah, no, I think I, yeah, I so I now enjoy production more than I ever thought I would. And that's probably down to the fact that, you know, persistence, obviously. Yeah. Um, probably validation a little bit. Like some people saying like, that's actually a good track. Hmm. Um, and then probably just having a studio. I used to make a lot of stuff like here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see, it's lovely. Um, but having a studio, investing the money and the time in it, makes you go, <laughs> it makes you do things. Well, yeah, if you're, pay- well, if you're paying money and, and just being in a different space as well i think that makes um a big difference it's like if you're doing anything at home you've got your home comforts you've got your tv you've got food yeah. you've got snack you know drinks whatever you want to do there's always something else to do to do yeah i think it's definitely made a huge difference and just the sound system like obviously in my bedroom my speakers are i mean i've got a setup in my bedroom which i practice dj all the time but i think production is it doesn't you can't do it and it's, i have to be in a studio it's really weird yeah yeah, yeah. probably going tone deaf to be honest i'm just too much too much loud music in my life <laughs> i have to be I have to whack it up and see what it sounds like but no it's 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 been a real journey with production like i, I haven't always enjoyed it i haven't been good out i'm not naturally geared towards it as a person like i'm much i'm I say, i'm impatient it doesn't come naturally to me so i've had to really work at it yeah, very hard. Just transferring that impatience into a bit of, into drive. Into some like, drums. Yeah, <laughs> into drums. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> um, but yes, it's been cool. And like, as a recent support, like Devstar, who uh, is is playing my track out a lot. Yeah. Um, I love that one. It's very different. Yeah, it's very. It is very different. Again, a bit of vocal, which I robbed from someone. But no, it's 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 great. I think. Um, it's really funny because he, he messaged me saying the other day he's going to play my track at Egg and I was really like, oh, amazing. Yeah. And um, I was, I couldn't get to Egg. I was going to Venice, actually. And, um, I was just going, to I was just going <laughs> on holiday to Venice. <laughs> it looked like you had a really nice time, actually. I the did, yeah. Great. It was great. It was really, yeah, very beautiful there. Very, very nice. But I couldn't get to Egg either way. I couldn't get to Egg. And I was sitting after work. <clears throat> So I work in recruitment, so everyone drinks loads, obviously. Um, and like Wolf of Wall Street, is it? Is that recruitment? Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and someone in my team said, "Oh, well, do you know what's really interesting? I've got um, I'm going to Egg tonight." Yeah. And I was like, "They don't. That's they know." So lucky. That was. It was really lucky. But do you know what's really weird is that obviously, like, I managed this girl, 
So she probably doesn't see, like, she knows that I DJ, she yeah. knows that I'm, I produce and stuff, but I don't think the people I work with really can see me in that light. That I, what do you okay. mean? You're my manager. You're professional. Like, you're very professional. professional. Yeah. You're, you're really good at recruitment. Like, what, what are you doing? Um, so I said, oh, look, I'm, <laughs> so it's a really odd thing to ask, but um, there's a DJ there tonight who's um, who's playing, who should be, hopefully, playing one of my tracks. And she's like, yeah. oh, my God, like that's great. So I sent her the track on SoundCloud, um, and she she filmed it, but she actually managed, I don't know, 4 a.m., I don't know what she was up to, but she managed to film. It was a great video. Track. Yeah. yeah I, thought it was, I thought it was you no, for some reason. No, 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 it wasn't me. It was really good. Yeah, <laughs> it no, like... it was, yeah. She did a great job, actually, and she sent it to me the next day. I was, I was very grateful, but Devster also took a video, so bless him. He actually uh, took a video. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, bless him. He, he took a video as well. So really cool, but just, like, getting your music out there and having it kind of validated is really cool. Um, yeah. And I played it the other day. I was at... Um, Rave Culture, who I, I play for really regularly in London at Lightbox. And um, it's crazy there. They're students. It's a student night. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, I've just never, I've never walked for a room full of people just having a best, having the best time, we'll say. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was like the most packed I've ever seen Lightbox, ever, ever. Like genuinely, it was a, yeah. it was the first week back from university, I think. Got you. It can be, a, it's a great venue to pack out there. It is. And you know what? It was, it was heaving. And I think I was playing 11 to 1 and it really, like by 12 it was just absolutely like crazy and I dropped two of my well I dropped four of my tracks but two in particular I, I dropped back to back yeah and I just was like Christ like people actually really like it I don't know what I just, it just seem really shocked all the time but I just I get so nervous playing my own stuff like so nervous to oh, the point where I don't so want to do, do it I, I, re I rarely play on my own yeah. songs I'm just like no I can't play it I can't I, I go to do it no 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 um, but I was, I was determined that I was going to just do it crack on and also I'm doing dry yeah. January so I'm like sober and like, I'm literally sober at like box no drink wow. playing my own track yeah. great time um, but yeah and I played it out and it just it was probably I'd say like I try and like have an energy to my set like a, 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 an energy and I think that those two tracks like captured the energy that I wanted which is really because until you hear it on a yeah. speak do you know yeah, I mean? yeah 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 um, so yeah it was just so cool I got some videos and stuff and yeah it was just it just went down really well and I think the bass line on that always track that I've yes. it, it just goes down like great yeah yeah was like, <laughs> there's a real flow to it it's a real yeah it was just, it's just I don't know why it's, just, it's really cool to be able to like get the chance I suppose to play your own stuff out I think it's um yeah, it was just really cool. Um, and yeah, I, I've got probably like four or five more tracks that I'm happy-ish yeah. with. Um, you churn them out, to be honest, mate. You really churn them out. Yeah, I'm trying. It's, 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 it's a commitment, isn't it? It's a commitment piece. Just, I'm going to do it and I'm just going to yeah. do it. Um, so yeah, no, it's been really, it's really been, uh, production in, in general has been a really positive experience for me. I think it, it's been hard and it's been challenging, but I suppose I like that. I like the fact that it's challenging. Yeah. Um, Definitely much more challenging than I've found DJing. DJing, you can be like in the moment, play the track, think of the next track, keep going and, and build the energy and stuff. And I find yeah. that my patience is good with that. But yeah, production's been um, hit and miss. But I, I'm going to go back to some of my old tracks actually because I just make some really random things. But I'm going to try and like get them on the level where like, they're okay. actually ish able to be played out. But no, but yeah, I think, yeah, production's going in the right direction i'd say yeah. for now <laughs> wicked yeah well you only get better i think it, i yeah. think it's comparable to like learning it in, do you ever play an instrument or anything do you know what i wish i did and yeah. i've got a little brother who's um he's 10 years younger than me and he plays the piano um well he can play the piano okay. he doesn't like doing it but he we, we taught him young where well, he taught himself young and we, he went to a teacher and stuff and um he is 16 now and he is really getting into music and production. Yeah. So for Christmas, I bought him Fruit Loops. He's been using Fruit Loops. Oh, great. Yeah, um, that's great stuff to use. And he's, I've just upgraded him to like a real version of it. Yeah. And um, he sits there and he's got his little keyboard and he just plays like riffs and... There's keep... nothing better to learn I than know. the piano for music production. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, scales, keys. Yeah, 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 yeah those things. Um, yeah, I think like obviously I had to learn key, key, obviously keys when I was producing but you know what? i never really dj'd in key no I never really yeah, well it depends really what you mix in to be honest like, very true a lot of techie stuff you don't really need to mix in key most of the time no, um, housey stuff was more more relevant the pianos and stuff you need oh to piano play. house yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah so i think 
uh, yeah, just he's really going to that. I keep asking him to send me some piano drifts. So I'll steal oh, that. Yeah, guess can, can you just play anything? Here yeah, yeah, yeah just send it over. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so he's gonna do it. He's gonna send me it tomorrow. Oh, is he really? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It's like slave labor. <laughs> oh, no. I'm looking forward to hearing this stuff. Um, but yeah, no, he so he knows all keys. He actually tells me more about it than I know. But no, I do wish I did learn an instrument. Yeah. I think I can play the recorder. Yeah. Well, I'd say it's a very similar experience to learning how to produce. <laughs> how to produce so yeah, yeah, it probably is. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. stick of it for a year, and then you're like, oh well, I can actually play one chord. Yeah, do you yeah. play an instrument? Um, yeah, I play guitar, guitar, bass, trumpet. God, yes, multiple some talent. <laughs> <laughs> some drums. Just, yeah, I reckon I could play the drums. Yeah, you just bash, bash some stuff. Yeah, no, uh, it, it is difficult. Yeah, it's really do difficult. Funny enough, I was speaking to do you know um, Inglasius. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I was in Amsterdam talking to him, and we was like backstage, um, as behind who was playing, Will Taylor maybe, and it was like, imagine how loud it was, and there's yeah. me trying to have a conversation about his productions, literally like both fairly sober, whatever. Um, but I was just having a chat with him, and I was saying I'm a big fan. Like he's he's like drum patterns are insane. If you listen lots to his going tracks, on lots of layers, isn't there? Lots of layers. Loads he's of a cushion. drummer. Uh, right, okay, yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so I was like, hang on a minute, how'd you get your drum? Like, what, what's going on there? And he was like, oh, I, I, I'm a drummer by trade. I was like, yeah, all oh, right. That probably, <laughs> that probably, um, yeah, that probably says it all then, doesn't it? But no, he's like, yeah, his drum patterns are insane, but he does them live. He does the drum patterns. That's so he really, gets the really kit, cool. Does it, which makes a lot of sense, actually. But yeah, no, that was fun trying to have a conversation behind like the loudest music ever. Uh, but he was really cool. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd just drop that in because you said you mentioned drummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've think about a few people like that. I'm like, how are, how are you doing this? Oh, yeah, play drums. Yeah, it's yeah, nice. like, oh my god, you're so good at this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's switch up a bit. Um, I think like it probably probably imperative to talk about Ibiza. It's kind of oh, been yeah. a big part of your career. Yes. Well, from the outside, it seems that way. Oh, 100 percent. I think it was probably probably the most defining thing that I've done in DJing. Not so much production. I was I was into production at the time, but I was still at the stage where I was a bit rubbish, so I tried to stay away from that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I, I literally I, was, I had a secondment from my job, so I, I, like I work in recruitment, so I work in pharmaceutical recruitment. Yeah, I worked at a really corporate company, and I I'd, I'd done a really good job for like three years. Um, and I kept saying to them, like, I want to do a season in Ibiza. And they yeah. said, no. <laughs> and I said, right, okay. But if I do well this year, I want it next year. And I managed to negotiate somehow this um, this secondment in Ibiza. So me and my now fiancé, um, yeah. we... Congratulations again. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, we, we packed all our stuff um, and we went to Ibiza. That was it. She quit her job. Oh, we didn't... Hang on. I didn't know you went together. Yeah, we did. We did. We've been, we have been together for years. God. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, we, we went... We just got, packed our stuff up and I said, I want to do a season. She was like, right, I'm not... She wasn't overly happy with her job. She quit. Fine. So we literally saved up for six months and then went to Ibiza. Actually drove to Ibiza. In oh, my, that's so cool. Car. Yeah, yeah. You say it's cool, honestly. As you <laughs> as you drive down to Spain, through yeah. Spa- through, down through France into Spain, it is very hot. Like, yeah. it, okay. mainland Spain <laughs> in a car. My car had no air conditioning. So oh, I thought that, that was great. the game, yeah. Horrendous it was. But no, it, it was really fun. <laughs> Overall fun experience driving, I suppose. But no, um, DJing-wise... Very challenging, really hard. I found it really, really hard the first couple of weeks there. Yeah. Um, I, for those people that actually know, know me, I'm not, I'm very outgoing, but I'm not particularly in your face outgoing. Like I, yeah. I found the characters in IB for really challenging. Like a lot of the guys that were doing seasons, they, everyone was a DJ, everyone, yeah. every single person out there's a DJ. Um, and they were very in your face. I'm a great DJ. I'm amazing. I'm great. Whereas I'm, I just, oh, right. okay. it's really, I found it really hard because I, when I'd go to a club and I'd be like, oh, yep. you know, I, you know, I'm a DJ, can I play? Here's my mix. Um, there'd be someone else being like, I'm the best DJ in the world. So I, I just found the whole environment really challenging. I actually wanted to leave after about four weeks. I was like, I can't do this. My ego is not up for it. I've just been rejected left, right, and centre. No one wants me to play. Um, but stuck it out. I managed to get a gig regularly at Hush um, yeah. for a couple of brands. I paid for a couple of brands. and One of the best clubs on, on the, in the it, West End, really. Yeah, it was. It's, it's closed down yeah. now. It's really, yeah. really sad. But yeah, it definitely was. The, the season I went as well, it, w- it was really good. 2017. 2017, yeah. 2017. Yeah. Um, and then things started rolling from there. I think one of the things with, with Ibiza is that if you just do a good job, 
you'll mm. be fine. Like if you just turn yeah. up sober enough to DJ, do it like you you build a vibe, you do a good job, they'll book you again. It's so, surprising, isn't it? That's like one oh one of like most things, but people just don't do it. A hundred percent. I don't understand either. why they don't do it. I understand it's why a lot it's, of a, partying. it's a lot of partying. But yeah, and I think after like three or four, maybe five weeks, like the DJs that were serious were shining through and yep. they were playing all the local stuff. And yeah, I think overall um that was great because i had a couple of residencies i played like all sorts of music house music um 90s music i had a, a residency which was really cool actually it was in a place called rio i don't know if you know rio yeah rio yeah yeah, yeah. and it was upstairs and um there's cool upstairs there as well yeah but it was um the pre-parties for amnesia together oh, and could... where else somewhere else that they basically had um all the pre-parties there. So they'd yeah. have a coach that would literally drive them from outside to, and it was all you could drink. So they used to have wristbands. All, all these, oh my goodness, uh, really? Literally 150 people would turn up, I DJ, and they'd all have unlimited alcohol for an hour and a half. So you great can imagine set. it was great, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was really fun. And I, I was playing at Hush often, like almost every week. Um, just playing out a lot. I used to play in, in Tice, which was like, a bar which I used to play at all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that was like classic. Um, not necessarily busy, but just all the time DJ. Like almost every night, I'd say. So by the time that fall season was in swing, I was like DJ almost every night somewhere. Yep. And I think that kind of um, intensity of DJing changes the way that you DJ. Like yeah. you have to read the crowd so well. Like you have to, otherwise one song could literally clear the room. Yeah. Um, you play in different genres, like mainly in the tech house like area, but sometimes rolling, sometimes end, like really vocal, sometimes not. Um, I remember the one of the best gigs I did out there. I think was um, I played Eden actually last year, year before. Yeah, not that 2018. season. Twenty eighteen, I played at yeah. Eden. And that was yeah. that was really good fun, um, and it was cr- really busy as well. It was really cool. Um, but the, yeah, the season before we spoke, there's a, there's a little underground club called Blue Room. And it's yeah, underneath. yeah. Uh, it was uh, S Parody next to S Yeah, yeah, it's underneath yeah. it, basically. And they used to do after parties there, like three or four, well, tw- two or three times a week. And it was crazy, like <laughs> lock in, like <laughs> shove a load of people in a room, a basement, and then just lock the door yeah. and just hope hope the police don't turn up. And I played there about f- maybe three or four times and they were crazy because it was almost <laughs> like 5 a.m. till 10 a.m. or something. Um, yeah, that that was, yeah. They, it, was just, it was just a really good experience. I think any... DJ should do it. Yep. I personally think I think it's a really good experience. Not necessarily one that you'll enjoy the whole of, but really good experience. Feel the same. I think it's it's that intensity. <sighs> yeah, You're it's not going to get that and the environment to anywhere. be that free. Um, yeah, I don't think there's a. I don't think you're going to do it anywhere else. I don't either. I think like yeah, I don't think you can. Um, do it while you're younger as well. Yeah, I would. I would have like 24. I was when I did that. So I wasn't. I was quite young, but not so young. But I was old enough to know that I wanted to do it seriously. I think yeah. a lot of the people there were like 19, 20, and okay. they just went out partying and missed their sets. Um, and yeah, obviously the the hush stuff ended up getting like friendly with the owners, and then yeah. running an event there the, the season after. So mm-hmm. had our own event there. Um, was this the birth of your? Was this the birth of that event? Yeah, it was actually. Okay. So, yeah, they they just asked us. Um, obviously, was playing there regularly. They knew who we were. We were like me and Cammy, the girl I was running it with. That's the next season in two thousand eighteen. Yep. Like I suppose like really nice, like friendly, like always professional. Do you know what I mean? We never mm. we, we never turned up and demanded drinks. We were just nice people, I suppose. And they come back to us and asked us to put a proposal together at the end of that season. Um, and then yeah, we got it, and we had uh, weekly residency the, the season after. And I kind of flew out once every other, every third weekend, and did a month. And Cami managed it. It was it was really cool. I think you played for us, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> wicked event. It was just cool. Like it was just really. It, it was nice to be able to book DJs that were visiting or on holiday or people that I knew and yeah. people on the island, just good like friends. And it was it was cool to give them a platform to like showcase, especially for newer DJs. That yeah, yeah. I remember being that person two years ago and. It, it was really cool. Um, and yeah, like the, the music was always bang on. Like it was always tech house, rolling tech. You could really like express what you wanted to do there. So yeah, it was definitely the birth of that event. Did I intend for it to be a regular event when I did it? Like probably not. I probably just was like, right, okay, let's just do this because it's a good opportunity. Hmm. Um, but then I started running the events in London and we that was that was just on my own. So I I just took the event come back to, to London and obviously was regularly DJing still and just wanted to get out there. And it's really interesting. I only 
ever, and I, I don't necessarily like to play the female card very often, but there are very, very few female p- promoters of events. Like, yeah. I don't know any... I met one quite recently, actually, who runs it with someone else, back-to-back sessions or something, they're called. Ah, yes, this, I've heard this before. Yeah, yeah. so they, they, she's, she's a girl who runs it, but I was really surprised by just... There's just every... I was thinking when I, uh, when I approach promoters... I don't think I've ever approached a woman, ever. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this is a, a big issue, yeah. to be honest. Terry. Yeah, no, I, I think, I, issue, yes, maybe. I think it's one of those things where it's a really, ch- what, what I've found, if you ask me what's harder out of all three of those things, DJing, production, events, definitely events. <laughs> <laughs> definitely events. Like events, you're doing events management, you'll be able to yeah. learn Stress. all about it. It's very stressful. But just like, it's brutal. It is yeah. brutal, like... You know, it is rejection after rejection. It's, you know, approaching venues. It's probably not something that most people would want to put themselves through, let alone, <laughs> let, let alone girls. But no, that, I think it, it is challenging. It's really yeah. challenging. And we booked some really cool, like our first event, we had Alicia headline. Um, and she was really up and coming at the time. Obviously yeah, now. Such a good, such a good booking. Oh, she's huge now, like, absolutely huge. Um and yeah, she headlined a small little event, probably 120, 100 people. Um, and then we've booked, yeah, we've booked really cool. I had Bedroom headline my last event, yeah. which he was, he's good. He's cool. He was in London from Italy, actually. We That's very had cool. a right, had a right bit of luck with him. But I've like followed his productions for ages. So I, I try and get people to headline that are about to blow up, I suppose, or about yeah. to get there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just for money. Well, not even just money, just because I like doing that. I think mm. it's a really cool showcase for people. But yeah, so I think it, just, it, it definitely evolved from there. We've had some, yeah, we've had some really good events. We've had some not so good events. It's just yep. it's just nature of what it is like. Um, book some really good people. Like uh, we, do, we did a charity event at the Cause, which is actually really close to where I live. Yeah. Really good venue, really cool venue, but out a little bit further out. So unless, you know, you have to get a really, really good following to get there. Um, and we booked Ellie Cox actually for our headliner, uh, yeah. and she was great, like really, really great good, DJ. really good DJ, yeah, really good. And she, um, she come and headline, but it, it was, it was a bit awkward because we had another brand in the other room and another brand let us down, so it's a bit, it wasn't okay. as packed as we want, but all money for charity, so it was great. It had an all female lineup actually, um, yeah, nice on that event, which was cool. Um, yeah, we've got four events planned this year, so already got four. Um, I might add a fifth, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> yeah. Kind of see got one headliner confirmed which is um someone i'm very excited about and i've got a sub headliner confirmed who you know very well um <laughs> who's also up and coming and yeah yeah uh, yeah really cool so just, maybe got a recently big um, big hit somewhere uh, probably i think <laughs> you might have done a podcast with him um yeah so just it's just evolved from there really i don't think yeah. it's something i i set out to do ever really yeah. um but now i'm doing it it's a new challenge it's showcasing me i suppose as well as djing production and get to you know get my friends and stuff involved and i think it's um it's good it's good yeah. for life <laughs> yeah it was just something new something again to exploring yeah exploring something you can do yeah it's definitely um has it been benef- beneficial for like meeting people and it's cool to be able to say that you're running events and people yeah. seem to be a lot more interested when you say that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's only like something oh so, do you do you? oh yeah I do yeah no. I got some mixes yeah that's it <laughs> um but yeah no it's been cool it's been really good it's okay. been a really um eye-opening experience yeah well let's switch it up and uh let's talk about some of these brilliant productions but like where they're coming out because you've had some cracking support oh, yeah. on those um release on stashed Yes, I think I was going to say I was yeah. going to tell you the full story, but no, it was just, we we'd been me and Mike Mikey, who you know is yeah. um, M K. I mean you M K M K M K. I think it is M K. Yeah, he'll Low kill me. He'll, he'll definitely kill me if we get that wrong. Yeah, um, no, it M- can't be M K. No, it's Surely. not M K. It's got to be M K. It's M K. And he's he's a, like a really good guy. And I, I think when did I meet him? God knows. I think I've, I've he, I don't know. I can't remember where I met him, but we've definitely been in and out of kind of messaging and stuff for, yeah. for for a while and I really liked his stuff and he's good good producer, good DJ. So we've been chatting and we, we started I was to do a collab kind of just randomly. Um and we just seemed to like really hit it off production wise. Like yeah. really randomly. Um just kept sending it back like two tracks back and forth. We've actually got another one which I actually think might be like 
not better because obviously we don't want to say better but I think it's a really good track um, that we've got it's not signed at the moment but we've got a couple of people that we're talking to about it um, cool but yeah we just hit it off production wise and we sent it to one particular label he actually said like he said no I don't think it's for us but he recommended us to Stash and said look I think it would really suit Stash and yeah um, top A and R in that as well Luton that's what an A and I should do <laughs> that's what an A and R should do. Yeah, yeah, label. that's it. Yeah, yeah, that is that yeah. is yeah, it was really nice actually. But so um yeah, we sent it over, hadn't heard anything. Um I flew out to ADE or I met you actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a fun time was had. <laughs> um and we end up going to the party, right? Yeah, the stashed um, We did. The stash party, yeah. We Metro went to the stash party. Bar. Yeah. Sure, yeah. It was a really cool little party actually. Um we were a couple of the DJs that were playing there, and it was really random. I was going to go. I was meant to be meeting a friend, and she was taking ages, so oh, I decided yeah, yeah, yeah. to come with you guys and hanging out with Joshua and, and Mark and stuff. And um, walked in, and DJ SKT was just stood there, and I was, I was very nervous. I was very sober, um, and I was like, "Oh no, I don't." I think it was Mark that said, "Oh, do you want to go over and I'll introduce you?" And I was like, "Oh no, he's very good oh, at no. that. He is. He's very yeah. yeah he's really good, but." I was, I was, yeah, I was far too like, oh no, I don't want to be that person that's like come in just to do that. So I stayed there for a while, had about six or seven drinks, I'd say, probably a good. I probably bought you a few of those. <laughs> I, like, I think you did, yeah. Drink, drink this, drink this, drink this, yeah. drink this. That's it. Music was great, actually. Really enjoyed the music there, but um, yeah, and I think it. Well, I don't know, you know, it's a little bit fuzzy from here, but um, it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely um, Mark and the two guys, the two. Uh, the two oh, guys the duo. From, um, oh yeah. no! We'll, Who we'll was figure it? it out. We'll figure yeah. it out. Oh god, yeah. I've, that, that, I've forgotten. Yeah, I was that. We've got well, that stage had, in the evening. It's that stage of the evening. Yeah. It was quite late. Um, but no, they were chatting to DGS, uh, DGS, and they introduced me. And I, I, I don't know what I do. I just, I, I just, I'm just a bit silly. I think I just said something. Like, oh, I obviously had a chat. I was like, oh, I'm really big fan of the label. Like, I, I really like the music. I've bought loads of stuff off it. And he was really nice. And he was like, yeah, like, thank you so much for coming. He was just really grateful. And I said something. I think I said something like, oh, um, I've actually, we, me and my friend, we've just made... <laughs> that sounds like, exactly what I would say yeah, as well. Okay. I was like, well, me and my friend, we, we, we've um, we've just made a track, actually. And we've just sent it to your um, your A&R address or something like that. And, it was, and he was so nice. He was like, oh, yeah, like, oh, like, what's your name? Like, I'll check it out. So I said, like, oh, it's, you know, Terry Ann and um, it's, yep. uh, I probably said Mikey, but um, M Key. And um, he was like, oh, cool. Like, didn't, I didn't think much of it and didn't really do much about it. Obviously, followed him and I always, always already was following him and Stashed. And yeah, seven days later, it was signed. Yeah. So literally just, yeah, crazy. So cool. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. So he must have, must have remembered my drunken state and, oh God, <laughs> better check that out. She might come find me. Um, but yeah, so that was really cool. And that's that's been a big release for for both of us, I think. Um, yep. Mike, he, Mike's got a lot more stuff out than me and it's broken into his like top f- four or five and he's got like lots of tracks out. So definitely a big, like, it was just a big confidence boost as well. Like yeah. if you've been kind of making stuff for a while and you get like a, I consider them to be like a really good label, a really big label. Um, Take Notice is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. And actually that whole album is sick. Like yeah, it, yeah, the yeah. EP is really good. Yeah, the new Recruits album. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's just open the door. I think we, I'm, I'm going to send another track to them probably in the next couple of weeks just to go as a, an EP, the one that you've ah right yeah, yeah okay yeah yeah um, mixed down and stuff and yeah so that was cool and then I've got another release that's just come out actually this week yesterday Monday Monday um, we've made crazy yeah again I, 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 they're really good this guys the whistle song the whistle yep. song yeah quite unusual again go for this quite strange undertone in my songs I think but um, that was cool because they they are throwing out some really good tracks. Like yeah. if you listen to some of the stuff they've got going on, um, and the guys that run it are really lovely, and they 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 yeah straight away just said we'll sign that straight away. It didn't even yes. Know. So that was really good, and that's out now, and um that yeah it's out now. So I think two week exclusive for Beatport, and then it's going on to Spotify. Uh, brilliant. Um, actually, some girl in my office literally yesterday was like, oh, I've just heard your new song. And I was like, sorry, <laughs> what? <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, I love it. And I was like, oh good, thank you. Just got a bit nervous, but no, it was really cool. Um, yeah, and hopefully, like, open the door for some other stuff. Really. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I was I was telling you earlier that I'm trying to not put stuff out that I don't like. That sounds obviously obvious, but 
I don't just want to put loads of stuff out there. I want to make sure yeah. it's stuff that I would actually play. Yeah, um, very sensible. Well, is it? <laughs> Not sure. Um, yeah, I, I think so. You should put out your best work. Yeah, no, true. And it takes a long time for me to get to something that's good. But I think it's definitely getting there. And there's, um, yeah, a few potential tracks that I think are going to be good. And some support from some cool DJs, like Solid Grooves guys, uh, started to support uh, definitely Remy and someone else on their label that's definitely supported it. And it, yeah, just it's really good. Um, I think the Stash one was my my highlight i think that's really like, yeah. good for me and and good for my uh for mikey as well so we could start yeah. to the year yeah no i think so i think i've got my goal is to release 10 tracks this year that's yeah that's what i've solid, written down yeah. so i've got that in in mind but that again like it's actually really interesting i was at um uh, where was i the cause actually and i, I do you know what? i'm probably gonna get this guy's name wrong but there's a guy called Mirko de F- flona Okay. He's like an Italian guy and he's cool. actually really big in Italy. And it was um who flew him over? Rise. Rise, they're a big okay. big yeah, London yeah, yeah. brand. And they they flew him over to headline. I'd never heard of him before, ever. One of my friends said, Oh, I've I've actually hung out with him before. Like, do you want to go? Um, and we'll just like catch up with him. I was like, Yeah, yeah, fine. Didn't think much of it. And uh, Hanging out with him, looked on Instagram, he's got like 35,000 followers. I was like, oh, yeah, probably, probably quite good. <laughs> um, but no, and he was really, really nice guy. And we'd hang out in the like blue room, I suppose, what, green room, what, what do they call it these days? The good. room where you drink alcohol for free. Green room. The green room. Yeah, blue room sounds, I know it's the place in Ibiza, but it also yeah. sounds like something completely different. Yeah, no, probably. It sounds really dodgy. Yeah, we weren't there. We were in the, yeah. We were drinking with him, and um, he would come back behind the decks and he was DJing and stuff. And he, played half an hour and i literally was like this is sick like what the hell so i, ta- I actually was like oh my god that this is this is amazing like yeah. what is this and he was like oh i don't i don't play anyone else's tracks i only play my own tracks that's sick and i was like <laughs> all his own tracks. honestly i was like sorry yeah. uh, what do you mean <laughs> i don't understand he was like no I, I, I just play my own tracks i don't really like playing other people's tracks maybe i'll play the odd one here or there but i just play all my exclusive music and my releases and I wow. honestly, I was like, machine. <laughs> I was honestly so. I was like, that is amazing. I was like, imagine me now to have enough tracks that you're that happy with that you would play an hour set with all of them. That's a, uh, that remain contemporary enough. Oh, I just thought it was great, and that's actually been like from that moment. I was like, I want to play half a set, just my own tracks, and it'll be fine. And that's what I'm aiming for. So I think yeah. if I can get like ten releases, that'll be a start. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, amazing. But yeah, that really inspired me actually because okay. I was like, I've never heard someone do that. But yeah. and then I checked out his tunes and they're all really good. So yeah, I like, yeah, bought yeah. like half of them. <laughs> so now I'm going to do a set with just his tracks. <laughs> yeah. No. But that that was a cool. Okay. That was a cool story. Well, where where can we catch you then? So I'm oh, I'm all over the place really. I've got um I I play really regularly for rave culture. So yep. pretty much every month there, and that's um different dates. I'm actually not playing the next one. I'm in Cancun. Um, which Very will cool. be equally as fun, yeah. I think. But um, yeah, so they're, they're at Lightbox almost well, every month. Yep. Um, I'm playing Summarize. And if you know Summarize Session, I don't they're know. a really cool brand. They're big brand in London. I'm not sure who's headlining that yet, but... Where's that going to be? Uh, it's going to be Still Yard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. So that's cool. Like that's on any... the when's that, 11th, I think, of April. And they always have such a good vibe. Like, they're just so... They're yeah. such good, like, hosts. They're such good... They've got just a really cool vibe going, and they're really big. They're playing all over the country this year, so they're in. Bur- I think they must be in Birmingham. They're everywhere. Oh, sweet. Um, and then I've got my own. I've got four of my own events coming up from May till September, so like one a month, pretty much. For yeah. oh, wicked! That's yeah. great. You got that that many in? Yeah, Whoa. yeah. Been, <laughs> going for it. <laughs> I think it makes me feel a bit sick, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got one headline assorted of four. It's not great. Um, okay, but no, that's so there. I've got. I'm playing like little bits and bobs. I think I've got a gig on the 1st of February in Bethnal Green. Like a, uh, I'm just like locking things in like regularly, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it should be a good year. I think that there's a couple of brands that I played for last year that definitely are that's kind of summer brands, which are definitely looking to rebook and stuff. Mm. And I think just getting... I think I'm always so harsh on myself about getting bigger brands and bigger this, bigger that. But actually... I'd be quite happy, like, as long as my, I feel like I'm moving forward, yeah. I'm quite happy with that. Like, I think people put so much emphasis on, all oh, playing this or playing here or I need to play here. And I think it will happen if you just keep moving yeah. forward. 
Um, but yeah, so that's that's basically yeah. I think, well, I've probably got others. I haven't wrote these down, which is really bad of me. No, no. Um, that, you, you said some bloody cool stuff there. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, what, well you know, you've given a lot of advice here already, <laughs> but like, what what do you think your kind of a best piece of advice for a DJ and producer and um, event promoter? Oh God, event promoter, don't bother. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Yeah. Someone else said this on the last series. Did they? <laughs> yeah, like, don't, just don't do it. Don't, don't, do, don't it. do anything. Don't yeah. put yourself under the stress. No. Uh, if it pays off, is great. No, my, I would say uh, work. I've always said the motto in my whole life, like, work harder. It's an awful saying, yep. so I just kill myself. But yeah, like, work hard. Um, this is so cliche. Like, be nice to people. Be professional. Yeah. Um, I think, like, don't compare yourself to others is, like, my biggest bit of advice. I think that a lot of people struggle with that, with social media and Instagram and Facebook likes. I think it's yeah. really hard. Especially in when you're trying to push music and you kind of can't do it without social media really these days. Impossible, I'd say almost. And I think yeah. I had read a really interesting post from um, a girl, a female DJ that I've met uh, at the tour room events. So tour yep. room do really cool events for female DJs and, yeah, yeah. and pro- producers. And that was, that was really good. Um, I actually had Hannah Wants as the guest speaker, which was very cool. really cool. But they do events for women to, yeah, like learn production, like, D, like DJ, it's really cool. Um, and there needs to be a space for that. Oh, it's great. That I think it's very progressive, like really good. Um, but no, I've read a post actually about someone I've met there and she, she said that she'd come off of social media for like yeah. six months and her gigs and like her, basically she didn't get any gigs for six months because she come off of social media and she actually shut down her accounts and stuff and come off it. Yeah. And she said the effect it had on her gigs and her like, stuff that she was doing was like crazy and so yeah i think it is pretty much impossible without social media but i think it's really important not to get so drawn you know there's so many people that have you know thousands of followers um you know that don't have thousands of followers and they pay for that and Mm. i I, I think you can get so sucked in why am i not as good as that person or why not getting seen as much as that person i think if you just take a step back realize that you've just got to crack on with your own stuff yeah work hard I think that the studio for me has been that. It's been, I'm going to just do my own stuff, get my head down. If someone likes the track, great. If they don't, then that's fine as well. I think it's really like important. Everyone's not going to like your stuff. I've DJed and people have not liked me. I've DJed and people have really liked it. I think it's just, it's really important to remember that it's not the be all and end all of the world, I yeah. think. Um, there'll be lots and lots of highs and lows, lots of good days, lots of bad days. I think yeah. it's like, it's not an easy industry. I think we were talking about it earlier. It's such a personal thing as well. It's the, yeah. It, it, it's, it's even harder, especially yeah. if you, when you're using your own name as well. <laughs> yeah, not ideal. I don't know why I thought. I just hate. I, I've done the same as well. You've you done know? the same. You yeah. have done the same. You want yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, really challenging. I think it's, it's it's really great when it's going well and you feel like you're you're progressing. I think it's really hard when you feel like you're not progressing and you're being maybe overtaken. It's not like a job that like you can't get promoted. It's not like that. I think I yeah. had to really take a step back last year and think do you know what this is either like i enjoy it regardless like mm. the second that i stop enjoying it is when i'll stop if i if i if i push it so hard that i'm not enjoying it which i have done i have yep. done in the past same here. same here what's the point i'm like, not bother yep. like i'll go back to my day job and i enjoy that as well like i i just thought do you know what do what you like take the gigs you want to take don't be controlled by other people like just because you know you can get really sucked into stuff so yeah i'd say like it's probably some solid advice there things i would like live by basically very good yeah yeah definitely the social media heavy stuff that's um, mm, definitely s- solid advice oh. um what about event pro- event promotion anything what really advice it's probably a really good idea like slouching you can see <laughs> yeah. you can't see this but i'm going oh god um event promotion don't stress like honestly it's the and everyone says that but I've been at events where, well, I've run events where the first hour or two has just been like, oh my God, this is <laughs> not going well. But actually it's turned out fine. It just don't stress out. Actually, I've got really, really bad tendency to just get absolutely hammered. Like Honestly, it's really bad. I run an event. Yeah. The first two or three hours isn't, it doesn't go as well as I think. So I just think, oh, it's going to be rubbish. So I'll just, I'll just drink. Yeah. And then it gets really busy as <laughs> five, six hours and in. And you needed. Uh, well, I'm DJing, probably. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. 
and there's been some occasions where that's not turned out so i've stopped doing that recently but yeah i think um definitely stay sober that's a great bit of advice yeah. um what else like plan like plan as much as you can plan mm. but don't like kill yourself over it like you're gonna have bad events you're gonna have good events you're gonna have, book a headliner that doesn't attract the people you want yeah. you're gonna do all those things i think it's just a learning curve and just yeah don't let venues mug you off would be another bit of advice because yeah. they will try um it's all a business at the end of the day <sighs> everything's a business including a promotion actually yeah. so but yeah Nice, solid, yeah. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's get away from the stress and, and probably just the last couple of things. What what do you think your your top like music moment was from from the past year? The past year, um, I would say the st- the stash thing was cool. Like yeah. I thought that was a really big step production wise, which yeah. I, as you say, is so personal and it was uh, nerve wracking to say the least but I think um, DJ wise I would say I actually do you know what the the gig I just did it this week honestly it was absolutely crazy on like, uh, last Friday literally last this Friday is, we're recording this in January by the way yeah, I think it's going to go yeah, in February <laughs> so, but, yeah. Um, yeah rave culture in, in Lightbox it was it just so it was sick so so busy and playing my own tr- stuff yeah. that's unreleased and having people like come over and be like what is that track like, yeah that's cool like, such a great reaction it was do you know what i was really not, i don't know what i was expecting really but it was a really good reaction um, i think we'll post the video up if you if you save it for me we'll post the video up with this oh amazing this, yeah yeah definitely this podcast. yeah i definitely will do that but yeah no i think um it might even be out somewhere um oh sick time. okay might even yeah be out okay somewhere, okay somewhere um but yeah so that was a, for me that like, that was cool this year i mean this year has only been a month so yeah in the last year that would be it, I think. I think that and the the production, that, that stash record is, yeah, definitely two of my highlights this year. Yeah, amazing. In and, last uh, year. <laughs> one last thing to ask you. Go on. Uh, by the way, for the listeners, this this last two questions have been an invention of Terry, <laughs> so she's brought this on herself. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, what, what would you say is like your most embarrassing moment of last year? So, do you know what? I prepared free. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. I mean, yeah. how... You don't have to do this to yourself. <laughs> but do you know what? Some of them are like normal as you know like some of them are really normal and some of them is like probably you can learn from um and one of them is pretty funny so i thought i'd just go for free um so i I, this is like the more serious one but i have you you probably used to do this and everyone i know must have done this at some point the djs i used to like plan my sets like yeah yeah, properly plan them like every song well like timings um it 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 depends because sometimes if i have a set that's if it's an early set Mm-hmm. then I I will usually plan it because I yeah. want it to be so like nuanced in how yeah. it changes and like yeah. not many people are there anyway so it's like yeah. it kind of builds but then maybe it's later in the night it's it's probably best not to plan it too much yeah well I never got that memo when I first started DJ yeah. so I used to practice and practice and practice and make sure it was right and um, I was at this event it was actually my first ever set with uh, I said Alter Ego and it wasn't Alter Ego it was another event but the guy from Alter Ego was there and I, yeah. I, I wasn't resident yet so I was, he was like checking me out, I suppose. Um, and I was thinking before that like, the guy before was playing quite heavy. And I was like, oh, do I stick to I had this thought, I was like, do I stick to myself? Or do I not? Like, what do I do? I, I, yeah. I had oh, I've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I decided wrongly um, to stick to the set that I had planned. So was it kind of like, like not as heavy as yeah. what it was? Yeah, so it was, it was going to as heavy as what he was. But okay, it was building up. It was building up. Yeah. So it was really full room. And I decided to stick to the, the set. And I think I opened up with some like, yeah, more, ch- not chilled. I want to go like more rolling tech, which was more yeah. vocal. And he was playing quite heavy like tech. Um, and I stuck to the script basically that I had. And I literally cleared the entire room. Like the entire room left the, the where, it, where it was. I remember the guy from Alter Ego looking at me and just being like, oh. I've made a mistake here <laughs> honestly <laughs> and then i clawed it back so i went into the stuff that he was playing and everyone oh, come back in yeah, there you go man and um the guy he won't mind me saying actually he is as blunt as you can get someone and i remember going over to him after the set and i was like oh like you know what did you think and he went first 15 minutes terrible like literally <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> oh okay it was like, but then great like absolutely great like really enjoyed the last 45 minutes but yeah. I think it was a lesson learned yeah, like yeah, just yeah, what yeah. like think about what you're doing like don't just stick to the set yeah have. um so that was one that's more of a lesson I suppose I've had at least have one where I had 
won a competition at my work to go on a director's lunch. Okay. Um, I had a gig after the director's lunch. Yeah. Um, and I maybe had drunk a lot, basically. Yeah, I yeah. drink. I had drunk maybe like three bottles of wine. Okay. <laughs> and I got to the gig and the equipment wasn't set up. So I had to get my... It's not a time to be setting up equipment, is it? I was not in a good way. Like, I can safely say that I was not in a good way. And I had to get my fiancé now to go and set up the equipment. Oh, no. <laughs> like, what? Like, luckily, she works kind of in, like, editing software and yeah, stuff. So yeah, yeah. that was really interesting. And uh, the, the woman who ran the event come up to me afterwards and went, don't ever turn up like that again. <laughs> Oh, Literally, no. and, I, and I can really remember what she said. Stern talking It was to. a real stern talking to, and that was really embarrassing. Um, just because I'd, I'd always pr- prided myself on being professional and a normal person, and I literally turned up like 12 out of 10 drunk. Couldn't set up the equipment, and then probably just played what I wanted. Yeah, wine drunk. Uh, just oh, yeah, blackout wine drunk, yeah. I think. So that was another one. Um, my favourite, I think, which is actually not really DJ related, um, but I was in Ibiza and um, I suppose it's embarrassing. And I was in high and um, I was walking around high. We were there really early. And I saw this man with a hat on, like this man with a hat on yeah. in high. And I said to like, I said to my friends, like, oh, I think like that's Kolsch. Like, I think it's Kolsch. Oh, no. Yeah. I, was, I think it's Kolsch. I was like, and there, I was, again, quite drunk. I'd turned yeah. up at high, ready to go. And... Um, they're like, no, no, like, don't, like, don't. He was in like the VIP area of like the high. Okay, so with, with you're another person. Context then, yeah, yeah, yeah. With another girl, with a girl with him, and I was like, do you know what? I'm gonna go ask him. I'm just gonna go ask him. So I get up, walk over to the VIP area, and I literally tap him like, on the foot. Like I don't know what I'm doing at this point. I'm like tapping him on the foot, and he leans down. And the closer he's getting, I'm thinking, no, it's definitely cold. One hundred percent, this is cold. <laughs> so I just go to him and go, um, excuse me, um, are you cold? And he just went, yeah. I was like, oh, okay, like, that's absolutely fine. And just walked <laughs> off again. <laughs> and my friends were like, what, the, what the hell are you doing? Like, why are you just leave him alone? Um, and it actually, actually, his, whoever he was with ended up getting kicked out. It was really a, a really weird situation. Oh, but I don't wow. know why I, th- I took it upon myself to go and ask Kolsch because he was wearing a hat if he was Kolsch. And he so just, it was Kolsch? It was Kolsch, 100%. Yeah, it was Kolsch. But it was just really embarrassing because I was there on my own talking to, tapping this man on the leg. Oh, yeah. And it was Kolsch. Yeah, hey. literally. Oi, who are you? Hey. Who are you? Who do you think you are? Um, so that was fun. Um, who else? I bumped into some DJs when I'd been really drunk and yeah. been like, can I get a photo? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, whatever it's fine what am I doing um, I think that's like embarrassing I've obviously turned the music off multiple times during sets oh man it who happens. hasn't done that Bloody that's hell. fun um, what else have I done I think that's probably like these are pretty quite standard embarrassing moments really aren't they I yeah. suppose turning the music off having the um, fader on the oh wrong. the fader on the wrong one yeah yeah classic oh, oh, whatever and it now happens. we've absolutely screwed up yeah so that they, I've just I've had probably loads of embarrassing moments to be honest yeah. but I think like take a bit of pinch of salt laugh it off yeah. hope it'll be fine yeah yeah absolutely it's fine. fine it's learning it's learning curve listen le- yeah lesson <laughs> learned but no they've been um, yeah interesting experiences there'll probably be more there'll probably be loads oh, more whatever <laughs> I think I, I prefer the embarrassing moments to the best ones yeah. but no it's um yeah fun times but I think um did you I think you asked me to prepare like DJs to look out for and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've got something you want to want to shout out to me, that'd be brilliant. I like I've got like I feel like I've got some big ones on here, but I don't know. I think I was telling you like from the minimal scene, like check yeah. out like obviously M M K no M key. Do you think it's Mikey or is it? No, it's not Mikey. It's, it's, Mikey's it's actual name. His name yeah, but yeah. I didn't know if he just said you know he's missed out the eye and it's like no, I don't no think it's just M- maybe no, it's not. M-K. I think it's it's M key. Um, yeah. he's like releasing stuff left, right, and center, and he's like really good really good guy and he's gonna go far i think um yeah. ben murphy i was just telling you about yeah. like, he was one of my he was a resident with me um that alter ego and he's really good like, again minimal like solid grooves resident he's really cool we should direct, like check out his stuff he's definitely going places there's a girl who i've met who is very funny um through session just being on ibiza called sophie you know her sophie sophie Russell. Oh, Sophia Russell, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, yeah. Um, so she is producing some absolute bangers. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got some really cool tracks. Again, I think she's probably on her way up anyway, but she's um, hung out with her those times in Ibiza and had some quite fun times. But she's she sent me a track, actually. I think she only sent it to me. It was a while ago. And I've been playing it every set. I literally sent her a video yeah. the other day on it, but it's cracking. Talented, aren't you? Really talented, yeah. She's good. Um, you know what, um, going back to you now and just with some uni friends, like they were just like playing music on the phone. I was like... 
wait, is this Sophia Ressa? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I love it. I love it. And I was like, no oh, my God, way. yeah, as if. Like, I, I, I know this person. Yeah, no, she's really cool. She's uh, She's been working hard for, for a while, though. But yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, production yeah. wise, she's really yeah. got there. Um, Bedron, who was my last headliner, yeah. a big fan of his productions, like, really cool, like, quite heavy tech. Yeah. Um, Devstar, I think, mm. is, I followed him for ages since he won those competitions at um Hannah wants but I think he's really gonna blow up in the next couple of years. Yeah. Like, I don't know, like he's worked really hard and he's Wicked got DJ as well, man. Amazing so about, um, DJ. Amnesia on the abode opening or something. He is, well, he is anyway. world class DJ. I think yeah. he's just getting like a lot of his productions out there and stuff. So he's like, yeah, really cool. Yeah. Um I think that's everyone I've wrote down actually. But yeah, I think yeah, there's so many good up and coming DJs mm. and I think it's really important to like well you're doing a great job of it obviously like interviewing and getting them oh, out there and yeah. um i've listened to some of your podcasts from the last series and they're really cool and they're just listening to people's experiences like is really interesting anyway there's other people out there like yourself like oh, you know, probably more than i know you know what i mean like there, you know but like it's as in um there's other people going through yeah the same things you are so 100%. you're not on your own with this yeah for sure i think that's like what it's all about really isn't it so yeah there's some really good djs up and coming and yeah i just i'm just a big fan of people that are nice like i'm just nice yeah. people draw nice people Good vibes, it's yeah. great, but yeah, um, that's it really. That's yeah. what my uh, what top three or four or five DJs that I think to look out for. Well, thank check you them very out. much. Check yeah. them out. You should check them out. <laughs> I'm going to check them out. Everyone else is going to check them out now. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for doing this. It's been a it's been a pleasure. I've been wanting to do this with you for ages. So yeah, thank very you so informative. Much. <laughs> yeah, very informative. <laughs> no, really good fun. Um, if you can fix my door on the way out, that'd yeah, be great. yeah, I love um. <laughs> I'll have Jerry to come and take a look at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, no, really, thank you for having me on. It's been really cool. Um, obviously, easy to get on with and easy to chat yeah. to anyway. But um, yeah, I think, um, Karen, don't you? We've got some really good people on this series, I think. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Big thank you for Terry Ann for coming to join me on the podcast. I've been wanting to get her for a while now, and it's uh, so nice that she came on and shared her journey with us. It was just nice having a catch up anyway, as well. It's always nice seeing Terry, and uh, if you didn't know, I do a lot of uh, mixing and mastering as well. So um, it's great to see those doing so well for her as well. Make sure you go and check her out on SoundCloud and Beatport and, and get some of her tracks because. Uh, she, she really is taking off and it's great to see her doing so well. And as always, please, if you enjoyed this podcast, go to your Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever you're listening, rate five stars or leave a little comment. It's really appreciated. Thank you so much. And until next time, goodbye.